As many of you know, I am an avid YouTube connoisseur. Now, even though I've only been making videos here on YouTube for about 24 months, I have been on here as a loyal viewer since about 2010. And every now and then, someone comes across your screen that gets your attention. Someone who really stands out. Someone who is extremely entertaining. And when it comes to captivating an audience, no one quite does it like the loud-mouthed real estate mogul Ben Mala. I should send somebody over there and cut your tissues off. For you to have the chutzpah to put a friggin' demand in for $92,000, you should be ashamed of yourself. Today, we sold $30 million worth of real estate, and the clock is ticking. I'll go in the mother hood, buy a up place, fix the mother up, rent it out to families, and make some money and improve the neighborhood. He's a high school dropout who grew up in the projects of Queens, New York. Not the typical profile you would think of, of someone who now owns over $250 million worth of real estate. He's bought shopping centers, apartment buildings, and most recently, a $16.5 million, 11,000 square foot mansion for himself and his wife, which is the most expensive home in Tampa, Florida. So without knowing any information on how to contact him and without any direct connection to him, I resorted to asking the almighty Instagram for some help. And it worked. Within one hour, I was connected to Danny Jones, who runs the YouTube channel Concrete, which films and produces the content for Ben Mala. And not too much longer after that, I booked a plane ticket to go from Los Angeles, California, all the way to Clearwater, Florida, so we could meet this larger-than-life personality firsthand, and also learn from someone who built up a real estate empire without so much as a high school diploma. This is what happened. Enjoy. I don't think I don't think he has a doorbell. Hey, here for Ben. Oh yeah, he's meeting with Frank downstairs. Okay. Just have a seat on the couch. Just to sit here. Yep. Okay. Sit there. All right. What the hell are you doing here? <laughs> So man, hey, I'm Graham. You want to learn from me? I got to learn from you. What's get your advice to it. everyone watching? My advice is yeah. get out, get motivated by him, and do it. My life was horrible. I mean, my childhood was the worst you could ever imagine. A child growing up with a horrible, crazy, lunatic mother uh, in the worst neighborhoods of Far Rockaway, New York, in the slums, surrounded by criminals and the worst element of society that you can imagine. In a shit box bungalow that was only made to live in the summertime, my father had us live there all year round because he was a cheapskate. That's why I live here. Everything my parents did, I'm the opposite. My mother used to beat the hell out of me as a kid for no reason. I never raised a hand to my kids. My father always wanted to be a cheapskate and live in dumps and save every little penny he could and sacrifice uh, decent living, I'm the opposite. You were standing in the uh, formal part of the living room. Okay. Uh, over here we have a family room. Over there is the formal dining room that uh, we don't use too often because uh, there's only four of us. So we have the dining room here. As you walk in over here, you will find the butler's, some people have a butler's pantry. Right. This house has a butler's kitchen. I mean, you know, when I was a kid, I always knew I wanted to make a lot of money. You know, when I moved to Manhattan, I'd go and walk past the Plaza Hotel and see all the dignitaries and big shots, and I'd say, one day I'm gonna stay there. In the old one, you know, right by Central Park. Eventually, I made enough money to stay there. I said, this place is a dump. I don't know what's in here. I've never been in here before. Oh man, we got a whole big closet in there. I didn't even know we had it. Here we are in the wine room. And uh, I'm gonna be calling it the cry room. Because when my wife goes out and fills all these spaces with bottles of wine, I'm gonna cry when I see the bill. Jeez. And she likes good wine, so. Uh, but this is the wine room here. I really knew real estate when I got out of the army and went to work for a guy that was already in real estate. 
and started working for him. That's how I really knew this is it. You know, this is what I like to do. This is where there's a lot of opportunity. You don't need a lot of education. Uh, if you're willing to work hard, you really don't need a lot of money if you think smart. See, once I got the nicest house, and I feel like I got the nicest car, then I'm pretty much done. I can retire now. I made it to the top level yeah. that I feel I wanted to be on, okay. and I'm done. Now my kids can try to, you know, climb the ladder too. Yeah. When you do have money, yeah. the money gives you power. Because I don't answer to anybody. So that's why I'm able to compete with all the big shots in Chicago, New York, and all the REITs. Because they need all these approvals, they're, they're publicly traded, they have boards. I don't answer to anybody. So I can put my money where my mouth is. I can go to you and say, you know what, I'm gonna buy your house. I'm not gonna pay you what the other guy's gonna pay you, but he may not close the deal. I'm gonna give you money today, hard, non-refundable. So you know, if I don't do that deal, you keep my deposit. You know, it's a typical kitchen, you okay. know, it's got a couple of sinks, a stove, microwave. This microwave is really cool, check it out. You press the button. Ooh, oh, you got a drawer. Baby, oh, look great. at that. I mean, you know, a couple yeah. of dishwashers. Okay. Uh, pretty much a fireplace here in uh, the uh, kitchen area. That's my lovely wife right there. Number one, to find a lots this, this size will never happen. Yeah. The guy that built this house, he had, a, he had to knock down like three houses. Right. You know, so you have to go out and buy three lots. They had to all be next door to each other, which is impossible to do. He used top of the line construction here. Um, it would take five years to build this house now, I was told, and it would probably take all in $10 million more than what I paid. So it actually was a really good deal. Okay. I had offers in excess of $5 million more than I paid for this really? place. Well, it's a very yeah. unique place, that's yep. why. You know, but you got to be careful buying unique stuff. You don't want to buy a white elephant because sometimes nobody wants it. But this, this house was very unique. The guy who built it, he, he went over the top on the construction, the design, the location. It has everything and it's probably, and it, for this area, it, it's, it's over the top. Yeah. There's nothing to compare to it. You know, you only live once and if you're gonna right. work hard in life, you should enjoy your money. I mean, you know, if you have enough to, to, to you should always live within your means, but yeah. you know, what's the point of making a bunch of money if you're not gonna spend it and give your family the best life possible? I agree. Did you see the house I grew up in? Yeah. 540 Beach 43rd Street, Far Rockaway, New York. Yeah. You wouldn't go, you wouldn't step foot within a five mile radius of that place yeah. so bad. So, you know, uh, it's nice to be able to have something really over the top. Timing is very important in terms. If you give somebody good terms and good timing, you'll get that deal better than the other guy that's gonna pay more money and drag it out for three or four months and subject to this and subject to appraisals and all that. I came in and said, I'm buying this house. Here's my money and let's do the deal at this price and I'll close it like that. Nice. That's how you get deals done. So here we yeah. have the bar entertainment room. Okay. And you'll find we have a company that makes these pool tables. We have a license from GM. We have a license from Ford. We do them in Camaros. Yeah. We do them in Mustangs and we do them in Corvettes. A lot of, we ship them all over the world. We ship a lot of them to Dubai. The Arabs love them. You know, they got money to burn. <laughs> yeah. uh, they all have oil money. <laughs> you know, to really be in the real estate, you got to live it. You got to breathe it. You got to eat it. You got to, it's got to be your life. I mean, you can do it on the side, but you're not going to do it on a big level on the side. But, you know, you got to totally throw yourself into the business and you got to be willing. You know, I used to stay up sometimes all night because I didn't have the money to hire nobody. I physically would paint apartments and stay up all night getting a place ready because I had an inspection the next day. You gotta do, you gotta cross the line in life. If you really wanna make it and you ain't got a bunch of money, you're not born rich, you gotta cross the line. You gotta go where nobody else wants to go. You gotta work the hours nobody else wants the hours. You know, I neglected my kids when I was young, but I did it knowing that I was trying to benefit them for their future. So yeah, my kids may have missed out on, you know, Boy Scouts or, you know, some of the sports activities or whatever. And I feel bad about that, but in the long run it paid off because now, you know, they're set. I mean, you're only oh, looking to go for Mexico. Yeah. You've got, you know, hot tub, it has a lazy river that goes under the house, I'll show you. You know, it's a comfortable place. So whoever designed it knew what they were doing. I mean, look at look at the ceilings, look at the balconies. I mean, it's, it's pretty over the yeah. top. The first house I ever bought, I think I used my VA loan. 
and it was like a no money down deal yeah. because the VA had a program. Of course. But um, I remember, you know, saving money to, you know, back then I was buying, I bought like basically crack houses that nobody wanted, you know, for like 20, 30 grand. So basically to put 20% down on something like that was only, you know, four to five, six grand. So I didn't need, I saved up some money, you know, and, um, you know, I bought the worst crap that nobody else wanted and fixed it up and made money and then took the profit from that or refinanced, yeah. bought other stuff. So here's the bar area. In this okay. room it used to be the trophy room. Okay. Unfortunately, I have no trophies. So I got a couple, but nothing to brag about. We don't get a lot of trophies in real estate. And uh, we're going to turn it into a game room. It's still in the <laughs> this table we've done here. And we're going to put a Corvette table in here. And uh, this is going to be the trophy room. You don't want to buy a place that needs too much work. You know, I try to stay away from major structural type work. You know, the foundation's got to be good. Roofs, okay, it depends on the deal. But, you know, basically I always just went in, put carpets in, painted the place, maybe work on windows, doors, you know, things like that. I didn't get, I wasn't big into construction. I've never built anything in my life. Instead of being a builder, I called myself a rebuilder. I would take something that was already built, beat down, bring it back to its original condition, and, and make it live yeah. again. I started off with a couple of lions. I started off with that one, the male and female, to represent me and my wife. And a friend of mine had them for sale. And then, I don't know, my kids thought I started collecting lions. <laughs> Next thing I know, this one shows up. It was a gift from my son. There's another one that Danny stole. The first deal I ever did, I think I paid somewhere around 27.5. It was actually a duplex. Really? There we go. Duplexes, guys. It was one duplex. one unit down and one unit up. Okay. Both units were like three bedroom units. Those units rented. Once you cleaned them up and you know I fixed everything up and it passed inspection, uh, those units rented even back then. We're talking around 19 late 80s, uh, maybe early 90s, late 80s, early 90s. Those units were renting for like 800 bucks a piece. It's a lot. So I took a piece of crap. And, you know, I used to buy, hey, whatever it took, I'd buy used carpeting, clean it up. I'd get, I'd buy used materials from secondhand places, uh, you know, buy the cheapest stuff I could to make it work right. And, uh, you know, didn't spend that much fixing them up, but, you know, made them decent and safe. And uh, so I took a piece of garbage I paid 27.5 for, probably threw another maybe five, seven, six, seven grand into the place. And uh, I hired guys off the street yeah. to help me in painting and all that crap. And um, and then, you know, so I'm into the place, say, for 35 grand, you know, based on the $1,600 a month income, it's now worth $150,000. Because now it was a decent looking place. I had two contracts in the housing authority proving that I had the rent coming in. The tenants only had to pay nothing or 20, 30 bucks a month because they were low income. And I went to the bank and I refinanced it and got a loan on it for probably a hundred grand back then. And uh, I got an office here. Let's see. Where I try to get some work done. And the office has a library upstairs. Holy crap. To, just for show. So, you know, and then down that, across that bridge is a whole entire guest house. Okay. And the movie theater. No way. No way. No way. How could you have a house without a movie theater? What is it, you go out to the movies? Find a deal that has some kind of potential where you can make it better, you can create value, you can get some sweat equity in it. It's called value add. Yeah. Uh, you know, and, and typically there's always gonna be a place like that. You know, people die, people retire. Uh, there's always a house even you can fix up. Let me tell you another good uh, uh, thing that I, I did very well on. I did very well on student housing. You can go out and you can buy Let's say you just buy a house. You buy a house, and let's say that house is a big house with four bedrooms in it. With students, you don't rent the whole place out. You rent it by the bed. Right. And that we did very well in, because we went out, we bought a property that had a lot of four bedroom apartments in it, and you could rent each bedroom out for about 500 bucks a month or more, 600 even. Now you took a place that you normally would rent out for 1,000 bucks a month as a four bedroom, but you rent it out individually as the bed, and they share the kitchen, they share the living room, and you get $2,000 a month. 
So if you're anywhere near a university, look for student housing. You can do it on a small level too. And a lot of times kids will get together and rent each bedroom. Right. But always make the parents guarantee the lease. So if they don't pay, you go back to the parent. Hey, your kid didn't pay their rent, you know? Uh, yeah. But student housing is good. Senior housing is great because with seniors, they never move. And they don't break anything. And they don't really use anything. That's it's true. pretty easy to run a senior yeah. building. There's a lot of different areas of real estate yeah. that you can do really well in. Downstairs, you know, we can go. That's all the guest house. You want to see the gym? Yeah, let's see. Where it. I spend most of my time. <laughs> Getting ready to put some furniture. We just... We haven't lived here that long, so she's still putting furniture out, decorating. There's another bedroom down here. So we're still in the guest we're house. We're in the guest house. We're still in the guest house. So it's three stories. Three stories. This is the kitchen, balcony, fireplace in the balcony out there. Okay. And here you are. Look at this. This is what happens. When you take real estate serious. Yeah. Did you ever think you would have a house like this one day? I worked for a guy that had one. Really? And I knew that I, I worked harder than him. Yeah. And I knew I could have everything he had and even more. And he built a house like this in a place called Lafayette, California, which is near Orinda, a very high-end area yeah. uh, uh, near San Francisco. He built like castles. He was a very big builder. Yeah. And I knew that if I kept doing what he was doing and kept working at it and putting my time in and flipping properties, I knew eventually I'd get to a level where I could afford to have pretty much almost any house I wanted. Okay. Uh, you just, you know it because you, you feel your life accumulating. You feel your life growing. You feel your bank account growing. You feel your assets growing. But you got to get out there and earn it. Mm -hmm. It ain't going to happen by sitting around, you know, doing nothing. Yeah. You got to get out there and find those places and fix those places and rent those places and sell those places. Yeah. You know? Get out of the way, Danny. I got to close the door, you son of a... There was a lot of opportunity where I was at the time in the bad, rough neighborhoods. So I had stuff all over town. I had single families I'd buy, duplexes. The duplexes started becoming triplexes. I bought fourplexes. Then... The guy that I was working for doing management, I also had him. And then me and him with his money and his credit, then I started doing big and deals. His elevator? Yeah. It's got no roof. In this bedroom, I'm the master. Here's the way to the master bedroom. She's got her toilet, I got mine. And I just had, you know what a total toilet is? What's that? A total toilet attaches, it's not a bidet, but it acts like a bidet. It attaches to your toilet the seat. I've seen that. Yeah. And it shoots water all kinds of ways. You yeah. control the temperature, you control the, the pulse. Oh, let me tell you, yeah. once you have one, you can't live without <laughs> one. We started growing very, very large in the apartment business. And uh, that's pretty much all I ever did was apartments. And it was affordable housing too, mostly. Then when I decided to move out of California in 04, because the market was really high in 04 yeah. in California, you gotta know when it's time to sell. You don't wanna miss the boat. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a market just like anything else. Real estate's up, real estate's down. You gotta buy when it's uh, down, you gotta sell when it's up. So I came to Florida, I found this area had a lot of growth in it in the middle of the state. Miami was too expensive, North Florida was, too cheap, and this was just right, right in the middle. So we grew in the hotel business. We found that to be very lucrative, fixing up beat up hotels, yeah. making them nice and running them. And then um, a few, about five years ago, wasn't only, uh, I decided that I wanted to limit the management because hotels are management intense, apartments are, can be management intense, but retail is not. It's, you don't have the potential to make a lot of money in retail unless you're a developer or if you can find one beat up and fix it up and rent it out you can mm -hmm. but typically I wanted to slow down the management retail is no management you buy a retail shopping center you know the tenants are there running their business everything that goes on inside that business is their problem I'm just responsible maybe for the roof and the exterior you basically collect the rent from a business owner and that's the end of it you don't have to worry about nothing else and they don't typically don't move a lot if they're making right. money because that's their you know their, you know their livelihood yeah. The master bedroom, 
balconies, fireplace. You know, you gotta take care of your housekeepers. They ain't gotta carry laundry everywhere and all that. You can set them up yeah. in washers by the rooms. When things are far away, it's very hard to deal with. And you don't wanna hire management companies because then you're not in control of your own investment and they can do things you don't want them to do. Yeah. It's not their investment. They're not gonna protect the investment like you are. So right. the biggest thing was, you know, not be so spread out because I didn't want to be no big giant company. I was happy just being a good, strong family business, you know, with kids coming in and helping me and just all of us working together. Yeah. So the tech room is, where's the light? Oh, it turned on the mag. Get in your hole. That's where we keep the brain. This is insane. All the camera servers. We should wow. if we keep Danny in that room, he'll get smarter. It literally has AC to keep all of this cool. A 16. Yeah. 16 AC unit controls here. The worst thing in the world is you don't want to work for free. It's like I went out this week. The market is ridiculous. The prices make no sense right now in apartments. Basically, we sit down, we look at the numbers, and we're going to say, wait a minute. We're going to invest millions of dollars in this deal, and we're not going to get no return or very little return. We're working for free. You don't want to do that. Okay. You, want to have, you want to make sure that there's some upside in that deal whether it's on the sale, whether it's on the monthly income, you don't want to work for free. Then you're not, then you just, you're not going nowhere. You're like that, uh, you're like that hamster in the in the wheel, yeah. and you know you're just constantly pedaling, but you're not going nowhere. You got to make sure there's, there's a there's a plan. You got to have a plan. You got to have goals. All right, now we're gonna show you. Feel like doing a little bowling? Let's do it. You almost look like the size of a pin. <laughs> he could be one of my pins if I ever lose one. But everybody can change. I grew up in the worst place in the world, but I always knew growing up in the hardest, horrible places, yeah. I mean, it was dangerous. Yeah. I always knew I wanted a better life. Right. I'd get out. He's living in the same neighborhood he grew up in his whole life. There's the uh, lazy river. I can turn the water on and it'll push you all through on a raft. You got to make decisions in life. If you really, really want to be wealthy, you got to... You gotta go further than ever the average yeah. guy next to you. You gotta put in 18 hour days sometimes. Well, I'll be honest with you, the army taught me that you can do anything. Mm -hmm. uh, especially if you got an army behind you. But they taught me that, 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 that you can get it done. Just get, you can get it done. You figure out a way, you get it done, and you push yourselves to those limits. You gotta push yourself. Here's the bowling alley. Get out, go online, find a real estate agent. There's plenty of them out there. A real estate agent will work for free for you. They get paid by the seller. Get a real estate agent that's going to find you exactly what you need and what you want. Go online, look on the MLS. You know, go on all the websites there are. Find something in your area that you can afford. The most important thing is get your credit right. Make sure you got good credit. Save up as much money as you can for down payment and for fix up, but your credit is more important than anything. And if you do have a bad credit report, fix it. You can get on the phone and negotiate yourself. You can do credit repair yourself. Yeah. You'd be surprised. You know, medical, school loans, student loans, things like that. You can get on the phone and get a plan with that person to get it off your credit report. Yeah. And then, you know, even people that were bankrupt. Bankruptcies will only last seven years. After seven years, they pretty much forgive you. All those short sales you were doing back then, yep. all those people are forgiven. Of course. And now they get to go out and get a second chance. Yeah. Uh, believe me, the banking world is very forgiving. Banks will loan you money to fix it up. They'll loan you the money to buy it and fix it up. Mm -hmm. You know, and they're taking the biggest risk. Typical deal, if you go out and buy an FHA deal today, you're only putting 3% down. That's three grand on every 100 grand. If you find a house for 200 grand, you only need six grand. Or, you know, you find a fixer-upper, you know, and, and, and tell the bank, okay, I, I want to buy it, and I want, I want you to loan me money on its value today, but then as you fix it up, they'll give you more money, yeah. you know? There's different, all types of loan programs. The most important thing is be friends with the bank. The bank is your friend. They're the ones with all the money. They make money on loaning you money. And that's how the whole machine works. But anyway, um, that's the story. When it comes to someone you can learn from and look up to, Ben Mala is it. He speaks from a place of authenticity without a filter and without any hidden agenda. 
He is truly a selfless person at heart who enjoys teaching and spreading the gospel of real estate. He should serve as an incredible first-hand example that anyone can make it in this business, that anyone can achieve what he has, as long as they have the determination to succeed and the willpower to always be learning. I've also been told that Ben will be reading the comments you read on this video, so if there's anything you want to say to Ben and have him read it, now is your time to do so if you just comment anything down below and uh, let us know what you think of the video. And most importantly, I would like to take the time to thank Danny Jones for making all of this possible. He runs the YouTube channel Concrete, which films and produces all the Ben Mala videos we enjoy watching. We also did a podcast with Ben, which has just been posted on that channel as well. So it's a huge favor, if you enjoy my videos, go ahead and subscribe to Concrete too. He produces some really amazing content, some really cool videos, and trust me when I say this, it'll be totally worth it to go and check that out. So the links to that will be in the description. Oh, oh, and also, make sure to hit that like button if you haven't done that already. Thank you again for watching, and until next time.